The iPhone 11 Pro Max was released in 2019 as the flagship iPhone of the time, with major improvements to the cameras, battery life, and the screen. But with a design that's becoming a little dated, how does it hold up nearly five years later? Hi, welcome to the TC. My name's David, and today we're going to be taking a look at the iPhone 11 Pro Max in early 2024, and we're going to be seeing if it's still worth using today. As per usual, the first thing that I want to discuss is the design and display of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So if you're looking to go to different chapters of my review, I'll put them down in the description and each chapter will talk about a different section. And of course, the first chapter is going to be the design and display. So if you want to skip to a specific section, you can go ahead and do so, or you can watch for the whole review. It's up to you. So for the design and display of the iPhone 11 Pro Max, it's essentially the same as the XS and XS Max in the iPhone X. While the XS and XS Max shared more of its design language with the original iPhone X, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is kind of a mix of a modern iPhone and the older iPhone designs. It has like the curved edges of the XS Max, however it does have the triple camera setup on the back, which does make it look like a lot more of a modern iPhone. One thing to note though is that because of the curved edges, it's actually a lot more comfortable in my opinion than the other newer iPhones that have the more squared off edges. I know that they did change it a little bit with the iPhone 15 series and it does have a little bit more of a curve to the edges so it is a little bit more comfortable but this phone is like it's pretty comfortable and coming from something like the 13 Pro Max like I have, yeah this phone it fits perfectly in your hand. And one thing with that curved design is that because it has a curved design, the display isn't actually stretched as far to the edges as it is with the newer iPhones. So even though it is a Pro Max iPhone, it has a 6.5 inch display, whereas the newer iPhones tend to have a 6.7 inch display just because the flat edges allows them to stretch out the display a little bit more. But in like normal use, honestly, the 6.5 inch display is perfectly fine and big enough for most people. And because it has the curved edges, it's a lot more comfortable. So yeah, if you're looking for a comfortable Pro Max iPhone, I think the 11 Pro Max is honestly one of the most comfortable Pro Max iPhones out there. The iPhone 11 Pro series also came in four colors. There was a green option, a silver space gray, which is what I have here, as well as a gold option. The green option was kind of like its special color, whereas the other colors were kind of just carried over from the previous iPhones. One thing to note with the 11 Pro and Pro Max though, is that this was the first time that Apple had put a matte texture on the back of the iPhone. And I think this is another thing that makes it look like a lot more of a newer iPhone, just because the new iPhones do have that more matte textured back. Now the sides of the phone are of course a polished stainless steel, and for some people they really like this and for some people they don't of course with the 15 pro and pro max now you have the titanium and it's kind of like a brush titanium so it looks a lot more like the aluminum so if you're not a fan of the kind of polished stainless steel of course the regular 11 had the aluminum sides and if you're looking for a modern iphone without the like polished look of course you can look towards the regular iphone series or the 15 pro and pro max However, I don't think it's too much of a problem, honestly, and it does make it feel kind of premium. The only thing I would say is that it is a huge fingerprint magnet just because it has such a glossy texture. So if you're kind of like the kind to go caseless with your phone, just keep that in mind that you will get fingerprints all over the size of this phone. Of course, you also have the notch on the very top. And this is like the original size notch. So it's the biggest notch that they have on the iPhone. But because it does have such a big display, it's not really too big of an issue in my opinion. And you get used to it after a while. I will say that after coming from the 13 Pro Max, the notch size isn't really such a big deal. I think that it would make more of a difference with something like the Dynamic Island, where it's more of an intentional usage of that kind of cutout. But the notch on the iPhone 11 Pro Max is perfectly fine. Sure, it dates its design a little bit, but it's not an issue. And speaking of like the whole display, it has a 6.5 inch OLED display. So the colors and blacks are very, very good. It does get up to 1000 nits for peak brightness, but well, I'm actually going to interrupt myself right now because the iPhone 11 Pro Max actually has a 800 nit peak brightness, 
whereas it can go up to 1200 nits if you're watching HDR content only. So in normal day-to-day -day usage, it's going to be at 800 nits for peak brightness and 1200 whenever you're watching HDR content. In my usage, if you do have it at that 1000 nits, it can get pretty hot. So keep that in mind that if you are using this phone outside, it does get pretty hot. And of course, that does make the screen dim some. So you don't always have that 1000 nits, but it is nice to have a nice and bright display. And yeah, it's honestly a pretty good display even today. I don't have any real like issues with it. The only thing I would say is that having 60 hertz is kind of its like pitfall. But other than that, it's a really crisp display. It's nice and bright and big. And yeah, I don't really have any issues with it. The phone is also water and dust resistant. And this was like a huge selling point for the 11 Pro Max just because it had more water and dust resistance over the older iPhones. And obviously I'm not gonna test that out because <laughs> this is a, what, five-year-old phone almost. And how much do I trust the water resistance of a five-year-old phone? I'm not too sure. But it is a little bit nice knowing that it does have a more hardy resistance to things like water and dust. So overall, the design of the iPhone 11 Pro Max is still a very premium design, especially since you have materials like stainless steel and glass. However, I would say that because it has that more older design, it does look a little bit more dated, especially when you look at it from the front with the notch. However, I think it's still a pretty modern looking phone today. and. You shouldn't have any problems with like the actual overall design and i would say it is more comfortable than the modern iphone so that's a huge bonus to it so the next chapter that i want to talk about is the cameras of the iphone 11 pro max and this is the first iphone to have the triple camera setup on the back and because of that it does make it seem a lot more modern than the older iphones now you do get the 1x lens which is a 26 millimeter equivalent the 2x lens which is about a 50 to 55 millimeter equivalent and the 0.5x which is the ultra wide and that is about a 13 millimeter equivalent so quite a big focal range for a smartphone even today and of course you do have the selfie camera on the front and that's also been upgraded but i'll talk about that a little bit later i want to talk about the cameras on the back first so the 1x lens the 26 millimeter focal length equivalent is the best camera that this phone has it does have optical image stabilization instead of sensor shift sensor shift would come with the iphone 12 pro max a year later however it's still very good and for most people honestly the cameras on the iphone 11 pro max are very very good and i don't think you're gonna have any real issues with it I will say that the biggest issue with it is probably going to be in low light situations just because it doesn't allow as much light on the sensor because the sensor is smaller than modern iPhones and of course the lenses don't let in as much light. However, the cameras on the iPhone 11 Pro Max are still pretty good today. And if you're using them in daylight like most people are, honestly, you're going to have a pretty good experience with these cameras. Now all the cameras can record in 4K up to 60 frames per second, which is a pretty good thing to have as well as the ability to shoot in portrait mode on the 1x and 2x lens and of course also the front facing selfie camera and just looking at the cameras themselves they're all around the same size and i just remember when this phone came out that everyone was saying that it had such a huge camera hump because of the three cameras and i remember there's like memes about it they had one where it looked like a bazooka and they had one where it looked like it was a stove top and yeah, it's just kind of funny to look back on that today, just because the cameras on newer iPhones have gotten so much bigger. So it's kind of laughable to see such a small camera hump today on a phone like this and just comparing it to the newer iPhones just because, yeah, we, we were totally wrong about how big this camera hump is. It's actually quite small. And you know, that's actually a good thing in my opinion, because it does make it a lot more comfortable to hold when you're holding the phone sideways. So yeah, I would say that having the smaller camera hump is actually beneficial to the ergonomics of the phone. That being said though, the cameras on the iPhone 11 Pro Max are very good today. And like I said, the downfalls of this camera system is going to be in low light. Now all the cameras are 12 megapixels, but having the smaller sensors for the telephoto and the ultra wide as well as weaker lenses on those does make it harder to use in the light so the camera you're going to be using the most is going to be that 1x lens 
With the iPhone 11 Pro series, they also introduced Deep Fusion and Night Mode. And having those on this phone does make a pretty huge difference when it comes to low light photography. And yeah, I mean, having the Deep Fusion is basically like in medium light situations, it will engage and it'll take multiple exposures and kind of combine them to be like a focus stack. And with that, you're able to get a lot more detail in those like medium lighted conditions. However, if you're in dark conditions, it will engage its night mode. Now, night mode is only available on the One X lens, so keep that in mind. On newer iPhones, they upgraded this to be on the ultra wide as well, but on this phone, it's only on the One X. So now having night mode does allow you to take a lot better photos when it comes to low light. However, do know that there's going to be less detail and more grain compared to a newer iPhone today. However, if you're coming from an older iPhone, then honestly, there's no real issue with night mode on this phone. And even if you're coming from a newer iPhone, I don't think you're going to see a huge difference. The biggest difference will be like from, let's say, an iPhone 14 to the 11 Pro Max. I think that's where you'll see a really huge difference. But for most people, in most cases, this is going to be a perfectly fine camera setup for them. I'll include some examples now so you can see what you can get out of this camera system. I do want to talk about the telephoto lens just a little bit though because it is a 2x focal length equivalent and I actually think that this is more useful than the focal lengths that you got on the 12 Pro Max and the 13. The 12 Pro Max had a 2.5x and the 13 has a 3x telephoto lens and I think that they might be just a little bit too tight if you want to take things like portraits and yeah I, I actually kind of prefer having the 2x lens. I think that the 50mm equivalent is a lot more useful than the 65 and 77 millimeter equivalent on the newer iPhones. However, things like the iPhone 14 Pro and the 15 Pro does have the ability to do 2x because it has a 48 megapixel sensor. So if you're looking for a modern iPhone with a 2x lens, then yeah, you're going to have to definitely look towards the newer iPhones just because you get more flexibility with that. That being said, though, I do kind of miss the 2x lens on this phone and having it on this phone is really nice and i kind of wish i had that on my other phone so i might have to carry this around with me <laughs> so overall i would say that the camera system on the iphone 11 pro max is very good and you shouldn't really have any issues with it of course low light is going to be its downfall however for most phones low light isn't their strongest you know ability to take photos and videos but with this phone yeah, it's going to be its weakest point. The selfie camera on the iPhone 11 Pro Max is also upgraded. It does have a 12 megapixel sensor now and the ability to take wider shots. However, this is turned off whenever you engage the selfie camera in video mode or if you're in portrait mode, it does crop into a more 7 megapixel kind of tighter focal length just to make it look more natural, I guess, because the way focal length works is that the wider the lens, the more distorted the image becomes. So 
if it's more cropped in on this camera, I guess they think, oh, it's going to look a lot more natural. However, it is still using that 12 megapixel sensor with the wider kind of focal length. So it is a bit of a strange decision. Personally, for me, I like to have the focal length expanded whenever I'm taking a portrait of myself on the iPhone. So yeah, it is kind of disappointing that you can't expand it whenever you're in video or portrait mode. And I mean, like for instance, if you want an example of distortion, I'm currently recording on a 24 to 105 lens on my camera and I'm at 35 millimeters, which is a good middle ground for having not so much distortion, but also being pretty wide. But if I zoom this out to 24 millimeters, then yeah, you can see how my hands are a lot bigger than they would be normally. This isn't how big my hands are. And it just kind of shows you distortion and how that works. And the more you zoom in, the more natural it will be. So this is 35. And I think it's a good middle ground for having a wide angle while also being not super distorted. So, so the next chapter that I want to talk about is the processor and speed of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Now, the iPhone 11 series came with the A13 Bionic chip and 4 gigabytes of RAM. And honestly, the A13, it's still fantastic today, and I don't think it's going to be a real big issue going forward. What will be an issue, though, in my opinion, is probably going to be that 4 gigabytes of RAM. And, you know, coming from a newer iPhone, like I've came from the 12 Pro Max and the 13 Pro Max, and those have 6 gigabytes of RAM, there is a definite difference to the RAM usage on this phone versus the newer iPhones. And I think that's going to be its biggest downfall, unfortunately, because four gigabytes of RAM is just not enough to keep things open in the background compared to the newer iPhones. However, I do think that the speed of the A13 Bionic is still very, very good today. It's just having not enough RAM that really lets it down, in my opinion. For instance, I'll have something on Safari open and then I'll open the camera and take a video. I'll go back to Safari and my tab has to reload. And yeah, that's kind of just a minor annoyance thing, but for, you know, just daily use, that kind of adds up over time. Whereas something like my 13 Pro Max, if I record a video and then go back to Safari, that tab will still be active and I don't need to reload it. So yeah, it's just kind of a quality of life thing. And I do wonder how that's going to hold up with more iOS updates in the future. Right now, it seems to be okay but that might change in the future when iOS becomes even more power hungry and resource hungry. So keep that in mind. I think most modern iPhones will age pretty well in terms of processor speed, but having the less RAM is going to be the hardest things on these phones, just because I think that having more RAM does help future proof it and make it feel a lot more snappy just because it's able to keep things open in the background longer. And I know that iOS is a lot more efficient when it comes to memory management, but not having enough RAM, you can't fix that with a software update. You kind of have to just have more RAM, you know what I mean? But, you know, just for daily usage, yeah, this one's perfectly fine. It's just that it might add up to be more and more annoyances over time just because you have to wait for things to reload. So keep that in mind. Now, if you take a look at the speakers and the microphone on the iPhone 11 Pro Max, the microphone is able to record in stereo recording and they sound pretty good honestly. I don't really have any issues with the microphones on this phone. And it does have quite a big microphone hole on the back compared to the newer iPhones. And I kind of like it. I mean, it hasn't really been a huge issue. And yeah, you can get pretty good audio out of this phone. The speakers on the iPhone 11 Pro Max are also very, very good. I mean, they were good when they came out and today they're still pretty good. Of course, they're not the loudest or they don't have the most clarity compared to the newer phones. However, I would say that they're still plenty loud enough and the quality of them is still very good today. So speakers and microphone on the iPhone 11 Pro Max are very good. OK, so the next chapter I want to talk about is probably one of the most important chapters. It's going to be the battery life. And because it is a bigger phone, the iPhone 11 Pro Max does have pretty good battery life. Now, it's rated for about 12 to 14 hours of battery life. And I would say that over time, of course, that time is going to go down and just, you know, based off of your battery health, you might get less of the time that Apple originally advertised. And that's normal. I mean, that's what happens when batteries age, you know? My iPhone 11 Pro Max has a battery health of 94%, but 
and I had this phone replaced in late 2021, so that's probably a huge factor as to why the battery on this phone is pretty good today. That being said, if you're using an iPhone 11 Pro Max, especially one that came out in 2019 and you picked it up on launch day, your battery health situation is probably going to look a lot more different than mine, and you might want to get your battery replaced if you are having trouble keeping your phone on throughout the whole day. However, with a newer battery, honestly this phone lasts as long as any modern iPhone and battery life has not been an issue for me. So yeah, it's pretty good. If anything, I think it lasts longer than my 13 Pro Max, just because I think the 60 Hertz display definitely helps extend the battery life. And since it does have a big battery, it's able to last pretty long. So there's also fast charging on this phone. You can get up to zero to 50%, I believe, about 35 minutes, but that's using a 20 watt charger or faster. And for most people, they might have a charger like that for their computer. So if you just plug it in using USB-C to lightning, then yeah, you can't get access to the faster charging speeds. There's also Qi wireless charging. However, one of the things that I do miss on this phone is having MagSafe. Just because the MagSafe system is a lot more reliable and just easy to use. Of course, Qi wireless charging is all right too, but it's only rated to five watts, whereas MagSafe can go up to 15 watts. And I use MagSafe on my phone daily, so yeah, I do miss having MagSafe on this phone. Of course, you also have the lightning port on the bottom. This is kind of an unfortunate thing, but also a good thing because there's so many lightning accessories. However, if you're looking to have a USB-C only device, then yeah, the 11 Pro Max is not it, unfortunately. So the last chapter I want to talk about are any notable features of the iPhone 11 Pro Max in particular. And one of the features that this phone does have is the first time for an iPhone to have an ultra wideband chip. And that allowed you to use things like AirTags and get the very like precise measurements as to where they are. Honestly, I forgot that the iPhone 11 Pro Max and the 11 series had the ultra wideband. And I kind of just thought it was in most modern iPhones. But yeah, this was the first iPhone series to have it. And you know, I have AirTags and I like to use that feature a lot. So. Yeah, having the ultra wideband tech is honestly a pretty big thing. And I would miss that if I had to go back to an older iPhone than this. So yeah, ultra wideband tech, fantastic. And yeah, it was the first phone to have it. So that's a notable feature. Another thing too, is that they did improve the face ID on this phone. They did make it a little bit quicker and more accurate at more angles. However, one thing that I really don't like is that they didn't allow it to have access to the feature where you can unlock it while wearing a face mask. And I think that this was basically a software locked feature and they didn't allow the 11 Pro and Pro Max or any of the 11s to have it just because they wanted to make that an iPhone 12 and newer feature, which is really unfortunate because the face ID on this phone is, you know, perfect. It's like what you'd expect face ID to be like. And yeah, I mean, just not having that is kind of a dumb thing. And I mean, like really Apple, like seriously, you could have just put that in software, but here we are. There's also Wi-Fi 6 on this phone, which does help future-proof it, as well as the ability to have dual SIM, and you can have an eSIM as well as a physical SIM. And when I did use this phone as my daily, I was using both eSIM and the physical SIM, so I do have two carriers, and yeah, it worked flawlessly. I would say that because it has the Intel modem though, do keep in mind that that's kind of infamous for being kind of an unreliable modem, and my first 11 Pro Max did have a problem with its modem so you know keep that in mind especially if you're looking at getting one used that they do have the intel modem and of course they don't have access to 5g now this isn't such a huge kind of feature back then but now it's kind of becoming a lot more ubiquitous and i would say that having a phone with 5g is more important than it was four years ago or even three years ago so keep that in mind so overall these are kind of notable improvements with the iPhone 11 Pro Max, but just kind of general life improvements. So to wrap up, the iPhone 11 Pro Max in early 2024 is still a pretty great phone, I'd say. And if you're still using one, there's not really a huge reason to upgrade unless you want features that the newer iPhones have, like the much better camera systems or the bigger screens or, of course, 120 hertz. And yeah, I mean, most modern iPhones are going to give you the same experience regardless of what generation you're on. It's just little quality of life improvements that make it seem better. I would say the biggest difference for me personally is the 60 hertz display 
just because I'm so used to 120 hertz. I have an iPad Pro with ProMotion and my 13 Pro Max that does have 120 hertz. So going back to a 60 hertz display, I'm kind of spoiled by 120 hertz. And yeah, it does feel a little bit dated just having a 60 hertz display. However, I would say that if you own one of these phones, it's up to you whether or not the newer features of the newer iPhones are worth upgrading to. Personally, I would just because, you know, I like to have like newer technology. However, I mean, I'm still using an iPhone 13 Pro Max and I feel like that phone is pretty much everything I want on a phone. And I don't really see a huge reason to go to like the 14 or 15 just because the iPhone 13 Pro Max is pretty much everything I need. And for most people, the iPhone 11 Pro Max is going to be what they need. But yeah, that's the iPhone 11 Pro Max in 2024. If you do own an iPhone 11 Pro Max, let me know in the comments down below. I'm interested to see your experience with using your iPhone 11 Pro Max. So yeah, let me know down below. And if you have any questions, do let me know and I'll try to answer any of the questions that you guys might have. And yeah, that's going to wrap up my review of the iPhone 11 Pro Max in 2024. If you enjoyed the video, consider subscribing and leaving a like down below. It really helps the channel out and hopefully I'll be able to provide even more reviews for you guys. If you guys have any suggestions as to what you'd like to see next, do let me know as well. Uh, that does help me a lot. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.